has changed. No, 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 no. You kill your enemies, and then you make <sighs> peace with what is left. It's no longer about nations, ideologies, or ethnicity. Fuck you, Frenchman. It's an endless series of proxy battles, fought by mercenaries and machines. War, and its consumption of life, has become a well-oiled machine. Jesus, we should have gassed all of them. War has changed. If we've learned one thing from the Greeks, it's this. That all great tragedies involve a woman. And our story's Helen of Troy would be Rage After Storm. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with who Rage After Storm is, she is not Styx's biological sister. Spoonclank. Instead, she's a YouTuber that accumulated nearly 100,000 subscribers over the course of six months. Her popularity was explosive. She was networking with everyone, appearing on multiple streams. People were recommending her to their audiences nearly daily. She seemed to be a golden child, someone who captured a certain demographic and held its attention. That is until she decided to talk about a subject which is apparently forbidden, or as Trout and Tears would say, verboden. So, after many of you have speculated about my stance on race, especially my recent one, I've decided to make a video about it. Because heck, I love talking about things that will probably get me kicked off YouTube and every other social media website. Now this video, and the reaction to it, would be the impetus, the genesis, for an autism festival which would take place over the course of four fucking months, dragging its ass across nearly every aspect of social media, from YouTube to Twitter, from Facebook to 4chan. And it would include an entire cast of characters from multiple groups on the internet. But the driving force behind it, the protagonist of this tragedy, would be one individual by the name of Prout and T. And as you'll see, as these videos unfold, is a story that is a vengeance, of wrath and anger, of hubris, total fucking warfare, the sort of battle online that only a high-class exceptional individual would ever engage in willingly, that would end up costing Kraut nearly everything he had, to the point of where he had to leave the internet, out of shame. And yes, like all great Greek tragedies, we even have mythological creatures. Granted, they're not Chimera, but there are a few pregnant Trouts here and there. Now, with this particular video, I want to put forward a theory. A theory on why Kraut and T began a destructive cycle that drove him off the internet. And it all begins with Rage After Storm. Keep this in mind because it's going to be very relevant indeed. Now, what I'd like to do is establish a timeline and the reactions which occurred within that timeline. Rage's video, Race is Real, went up on June 24th, four days later. On Adam Worski's podcast, number 55, on June 28th, Kraut and T, among others, discussed their reaction to the video. Welcome back to another Worski Live. I'm here with Chris Worski. What's up? And we have a full house today. We yeah. got Kraut and T, some black guy, Kasara, and Jeff Holiday. What's going on, everyone? Now, there are many golden moments that take place within this particular chat. Many of the guests take umbrage with what they see as dog whistling, that rage is signaling to real racists, to the neo-Nazis out there with this video that she is one of them. They don't like the sources which are discussed. It just looks like she's just repeating what the Daily Storm article says. She, she just read the article, said, okay, this sounds right. Uh, apparently didn't put any effort into questioning any of it, and then said, okay, this is how it is. Fair enough. Maybe the Daily Stormer wasn't the way to go. Maybe she should have looked for information from other sources, like, say, a documentary.
Oh, oh, that's that's uh, woo, that's a bit harsh. Race realism is is actually really fucking pervasive. Uh, Stephen Molyneux fucking talks about this shit all the time, and he yeah. talks out of his fucking ass. Uh, I made two videos about race realism. These people fucking followed me for six months, making sock accounts just so they can get around me muting them. Being like, why aren't you debating this? Um, there's no fucking debate, you To be honest, cards. those goddamn neo-Nazis and their fucking frog alt accounts. Thank God you didn't do anything to fucking encourage that. Thank God you didn't take their symbol and co-opt it into some E-bombs world tier shit, huh, Jeff? The whole point of Kekistan is taking back Pepe from you douche nozzles trying to, like, meme your way into some sort of interesting political position. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about you. Nobody ever fucking cared about you. You're cringy as fuck. The whole meme is just to take the piss out of you. Maybe, maybe you shouldn't be shooting shots across the bow if you don't want fire fucking returned. But nonetheless, on the stream, multiple things are brought up. They don't like her sources. They think it's dog whistling. They don't like uh, her approach to the subject. And there's some definite hostility towards the alt-right, towards race realists, towards white nationalists, or anybody that really sees the, the issue differently than they perhaps see it. But the shit show proper didn't happen until the very next day, on June 29th, when Kraut and T tweeted this out, at Kipper Central. You might want to look into the views of one of your contributors, Rage After Storm. And almost immediately, the reaction is, seriously? Now, Rage had written for Kipper Central, which is a UKIP account. And here Kraut is, one day after discussing and mocking her video, writing to them to say that you need to look into your contributor, Rage After Storm. The reaction was not friendly, if you can put it that way. But there's another more interesting reaction that followed fairly quickly afterwards. This was at 9.31 a.m. on June 29th. At 12.05 p.m. on June 29th, a few hours later from when Kraut had messaged them, Kipper Central responds, We can confirm we are looking into one of our writer's recent videos. No further comment will be made until we have reviewed the video. Now, the thing about Kipper Central is, it's a relatively small account. Currently, it has 744 followers, and that's not a number that's drastically changed overnight. They didn't just lose half a million. It's always been a small channel. So you can probably imagine their shock when they get this response to their announcement about a writer on their website. Great, it's Rage After Storm, and she appears to be a racist pig. Fill us in on what steps you take. Thank you. That's from Soledad O'Brien. Soledad O'Brien knows who Rage After Storm is. Soledad O'Brien is contacting a fucking Twitter account with 700 followers. And very shortly after that, on June 30th, the next day, Kipper Central releases this statement regarding Rage. We have decided to suspend one of our writers, Rage After Storm, following a series of tweets and the content of one of her YouTube videos. When Rage first started writing for us, she was very down-to-earth and agreed with many of our other writers on many things. However, very recently, she has changed her views and has become sympathetic to ideologies we cannot endorse or facilitate. Unless she reforms her thinking... We will have no option but to remove Rage from Kipper Central entirely. We hope she takes this opportunity to change her ways and rethink whether this is the best direction for her. To be clear, we will not tolerate Rage's current views and standpoints, and people with these views are not welcome in Kipper Central. So within one week of her video, she has been disavowed from the UKIP organization which she was associated with. The reaction, the lashback that happened online following this was a bit extreme, but it really ramped up on July 24th when Rage After Storm deleted her YouTube account and her Twitter account because it was around this time that people went back and saw what Kraut had written to Kipper Central and confronted him with it, stating that he had played a hand in basically driving Rage After Storm off of the internet. Kraut did not have the best of reactions to that uh, apparent viewpoint. He saw it as an attack, an attack on him from the alt-right, from race realists, from white nationalists, from the very people he was mocking in the stream when he made fun of her video. One day after she had shut down her accounts, Kraut released this on his Twitter. I find it fucking hilarious that some of you compared the tweet I made to the letter-writing campaign Thunderfoot had to endure. And the best about all of this? Wait for it. Wait for it. 
I actually contacted her employer, who told me in person that I am absolutely in no way responsible for her being fired, and making it absolutely clear that it was their decision, that many of their writers watch her videos as well, and that many more contacted them by means other than tweets. You, who manufactured outrage over this, are a bunch of pathetic, whimpering little shits. Do you really have so little to add to the conversation that you have to pretend that someone has no personal responsibility for her actions? and pin it to someone who critiqued her views. Are your arguments so pathetically weak that you have to devolve into drama shit-flinging? You are a joke. A massive fucking joke. And yes, I'm looking at you there, Edgy Sphinx, Cedarwood, and Blondie. Especially Cedarwood and Edgy. You too? You after complaining over moral grandstanding? Complaining that people opposed to you do too much drama and no substantive debate over issues? And what do you do about these complaints? You go looking for shit to fling like the little shit flinging mental midget monkeys that you actually are. Pathetic. Tweets with screen caps to follow. Oh, but Kraut wasn't done there. Oh boy. It's almost like actions have fucking consequences. Actions have consequences, huh, Kraut? Actions have consequences. Really? Really? Really makes you... Oh, shit. What? My codex going off. Who's that? Oh, it's Sour Snake. What's, what's that snake? Actions have consequences. Okay, okay, thanks, buddy. Thanks for checking in. The very next day, after all those Twitter spats, Kraut releases this video, Artificial Outrage. You can tell from the like-dislike ratio that things did not go... They did not go smoothly. And it's no surprise, really. Listen to who he blames. Blames for this artificial outrage. This nonsense, of course, took its path down the road of ridiculousness, most amusingly with the paragons of ethical behavior joining with them, the doxing AIU scumfuck crowd. And, of course, half of Twitter's alt-right frog accounts about how I supposedly went after her private supposed job, how I tried to censor her, a whole lot of other bullshit. And he has a few things to say about rage in particular, and about Kipper Central's decision to disassociate or disavow her. Rage after the storm didn't have a paying job at Kipper Central. Kipper Central distanced itself from her anyway, because duh, what a shock. They don't wish to associate with racists. But one of the more interesting pieces from the video itself is when he addresses the tweet that he had sent to Kipper Central. I want you to pay particular attention to how he words this and to the tweets that he shows while he's talking. I tweeted at that UKIP blog's Twitter handle to maybe take a closer look into the views of their contributor, Rage After the Storm. And what happened after that? Well, 20 minutes after I made that tweet, I started thinking that it was childish and stupid and proceeded to delete that tweet and make two statements on Twitter that I had gone too far with this, and that it was childish, and that I had consequently deleted that tweet. It was childish and stupid, and he deleted it out of shame. And the tweet he's highlighting says, you were attempting to de-platform someone because you disagreed with them. And his response was, acknowledging it. I know. I know that's what I was attempting to do. A lot of the discussion around the events of what happened with Rage After Storm about did Kraut have a hand in getting her disassociated or disavowed? Did he have a hand in pushing her off the internet? Focus on the idea of the consequence, but rarely talk about the intent. Kraut is openly discussing the intent right here. He was attempting to get her deplatformed. There's no arguing about that. He says it himself. He acknowledges it in the tweet response. But what I'd really love to know is what changed from him saying this on Andy Worski a month ago. I'm mainly looking at her sources. I'm not going to make any kind of emotional or moralizing arguments. To saying this in the video. And in the end, your Nazi bitch queen, Rage After the Storm, as much as you would like to fantasize about her being silenced, packed her bags and ran away like a little bitch. I'm not going to get emotional. I'm not going to make this personal to racist Nazi little bitch queen. It seems like you might have gotten a little emotional. And that's really the crux of it all, isn't it? Getting emotional, becoming invested, getting angry and wanting revenge. Revenge against who? Well, revenge against those goddamn people that were disliking that video, that were tweeting at him, that were commenting about his actions and his viewpoints. Those fucking alt-righters, those race realists, just like their little Nazi bitch queen, Rage After Storm. They need to be taken down a peg. They need to be taught 
a fucking lesson. And who better to do it than Kraut and his posse of intellectuals? I'm talking high-tier academics, YouTube, scientists. Most well-known and credentialed scientists of this YouTube community. And so you can see how this one video by this one content creator can gain momentum, can snowball out of control, and motivate Kraut through all of the different ripple effects around it to set on a path of his own self-destruction. Everything he has done for the last four months is to get petty revenge at a perceived slight from a political group or those purporting to believe in a certain ideology. He was simply pissed off. And the things we'll be discussing in these videos, they're not just about past events. They pertain to things that are happening currently and are going to be happening in the future. You saw it yourself on the Andy Worski podcast. There were two people there that ended up in that Discord with Kraut. His 24-hour op Discord we'll be talking about next video. There was Kraut himself and Jeff Holiday. You know, it's crazy. I, 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 wasn't there somebody else? I mean, it was, there was Kraut, yeah, and there was Jeff Holiday, but was anybody else in that call when all this shit started? When the very origin event that led to Kraut creating a Discord to go after people? Was there anybody else there aside from Kraut and Jeff Holiday? I don't, Andy, can you, can you give me some information here? So we just finished Worski Live number 55. Uh, Kraut was there, Chris, Jeff, Kasara, some black guy, uh, Dave Cullen, and, um, Based Mama swung by at the end. Based Mama, of course. Based Mama from the Discord with Kraut and Jeff Holiday and all the other people running 24-hour ops. Based Mama, who's running an event called Kilroy. Kilroy, an event that basically disinvited people that have right-wing beliefs. You know, all those identitarians, those icky alt-writers, those people that don't align politically with what she likes. Like, here's my idea. Okay, if you want to be like race separatists how about all you guys who don't want to do that you just stay in your own areas and yeah. the rest of us alone how weird and coincidental that she would be there at the birthing of Kraut's vendetta, and then also in the Discord, and then also making decisions about Kilroy, which somehow shit on people that are right wing. That's that really makes me think. That's gonna be that'll be fun to dig into. Put on my tinfoil hat, let's go fucking crazy with this shit. Because I'll tell you, I'm here for the fucking laughs. And what's coming up next is some of the cringiest fucking shit from so many people. It's it's mind-blowing. This originally was going to be one video, but these autistic fucks can't cool it off for like five minutes and let me complete it. It's just, it's just fucking day after day of golden quotes. I can't, I can't even go over a list of the shit that's coming up. We've got YouTube scientists. We've got people getting cucked. It's just, it's some crazy shit. So allow me to introduce you to the concept of a new type of advent calendar. We're not celebrating baby Jesus. We're celebrating Spurgs. We're going to call this an autism calendar. Every, every day's a new surprise. So prepare yourself for part two, my fellow academics. I'm Pickle Rick! I feel a little bit emotionally invested. A little bit, uh, a little bit pissed off. But luckily it was just him. Nobody else took part in this. It was all just, cr oh, wait a minute. It's because of the Rage After Storm thing. Okay. We made a video in response to us bullying Rage After Storm. And make no mistake, oh, we bullied the shit after Rage, Rage After the Storm. We bullied her off social media. She took herself off that shit. We bullied the fuck out of her. Have a good I... one, guys. Oh. Oh, boy. Look. It looks like they're a cult or something. Now, Rage, you knew when you came to Kekistan that racism is not tolerated. How do you plead? <coughs> Through your silence, you have admitted your guilt? Hey now, my fellow Kekistani. You can't shadow it with an attitude like that. What are you doing, Jeff? Now, for those of you just joining, and even for those that have watched part one, there might be a few questions in your mind. Who the fuck are these people? And what exactly is going on? Well, it, it's my hope with this series of videos to try to sum it up as best I can. Now, part one was the motivation. You don't really need to know exactly who they are. You just need to know the underlying reason for what's about to happen. And if I were to sum that up as best I could, Kraut got angry at a girl on the internet and spent the next six months waging an online jihad against her. How highly academic of him. Now with part two, I'm going to start to clear some things up. Crowd and T is a YouTuber. A YouTuber that likes to make typically anti-SJW videos. Rage After Storm happened to take a different approach. She was more right-wing than he was. They had a disagreement over race realism. 
and he lit her up on a live stream. The very next day, he tweeted at a place she wrote for. Three weeks after that, she left the internet, and people brought up the fact that he was attempting to basically de-platform her. This ended up enraging Kraut. He became bitter and pissed off at the people that kept bringing this up. And he began to see rage after storm and those that associate with her political ideology or even those that were sympathetic to her as an enemy that needed to be destroyed. So how did our little German general decide to go about this? Well, Art Trout, he's a, uh, he's a strong swimmer. He's going to go right up that fucking stream. He doesn't care. He's going to read all those books. 800 page books, hand them over. I'm going to learn everything I can. I'm even going to work with academics, highly intelligent intellectual YouTubers most well-known and credentialed scientists of this YouTube community. And we're going to kick the alt-right's ass. So Kraut dedicates nearly a month of his time to honing his skill. He's studying biology. Genetic and no, we have fucking not. We have not done a knockout study on nigger dick size. We have done a knockout study. No! He's preparing himself for the final showdown. He's going to release a video that's going to make the alt-right beg for mercy. All those filthy race realists are going to go crying home to mama because Kraut and T is here to drop some knowledge bombs on their ass. Dude, just talk to my fucking scientists. Or at least that's what he had hoped was going to happen, which turned out to be the opposite of reality. His very first video wasn't too well received, and almost immediately people began to reply to it. They were looking at some of the finer details of the argument that he presented. Uh, one man in particular seemed to catch Kraut's ire. The K-type sexual reproduction strategy is distinctively mammalian. <laughs> no, the K-type reproduction strategy is not distinctively mammalian. There are plants, Kraut, that are K-type. What the fuck are you talking about? The male does not remain with the female. The pregnancy is very short with the female. <laughs> Kraut, trouts, brown trouts do not get pregnant. <laughs> Did you just say the pregnancy is very short? happens through the trout swimming up river to mate the male does not remain with the female the pregnancy is very short the pregnancy is very short Crap. brown trouts don't get pregnant Along with the Frenchman, there were others that made videos that pissed Kraut off. This uh, didn't deter him. Remember, he's on a holy crusade to teach these people a lesson. So he decided he wasn't going to just double down. He wasn't going to triple down. He was quadrupling down on the autism by creating an honest-to-God literal internet war room to wage jihad against people that were laughing at him. He was already angry enough about Rage After Storm. He was angry enough about the backlash he got from it. But now he's got a fucking Frenchman asking him where the pregnant trout are. He couldn't handle that shit. He couldn't stand being mocked. And so he sets about creating the Academy of Discord. And as you can see, its ranks are filled with only the finest of individuals. Look at these accredited YouTube scientists. Do you see the parentheses? Can you handle that high-level intellect? I just, oh god, I'm gonna need to huff a few here just to be able to stand shoulder to shoulder with these giants. Oh, fuck yes. Oh, breathe deeply. They're YouTube scientists. So what subjects of study was this Harvard of the Internet uh, focusing its attention on? Those are just people of interest. I recognize some of these names. They're getting added on and taken off. I mean, you've got Alt Hype, you've got Black Pigeon Speaks, David Cedarwood, Red Ice TV, Warren Southern, Millennial Woes. You know, I recognize these names. They all have something they all have something in common. I can't quite put my finger on it. But you know, that that's harmless. It's not like they called it targets or something. Like it was some weird internet mafioso hit list that a bunch of autistic internet spurgs compiled together for some weird fucking vendetta. Oh wait, they totally did that. From Waz Lee. Hey dude, could you rename the target section of the Discord to something like people of interest or something? If this group leaks, which it will because they always do, that's a, that's a little bit of irony. Having a section labeled targets isn't a good look. Kraut. Okay. 
hey, bro, I was just wondering, can we could we possibly rename that list you made from people we want to fucking murder and burn their bodies to, like, fluffy bunnies or something? I'm just worried if somebody sees that, they're going to think we're fucking insane. That's some incredible OPSEC in this internet war room. Really locking shit down tight, Kraut. Really, really keeping a fucking leash on things, aren't you, buddy? This is about as well done as your biology video. Okay, I hear you saying. So you've got a Discord full of potentially unstable academic intellectuals and YouTubers with a real fucking hit list for a vendetta. What's the, uh, what's the German mafia here gonna do with it? Well, the descent into complete LARPing madness really takes place almost side by side with each video that's released after the first one. You'll see by the ratings that not only do the likes start to decrease, the dislikes overtake them. Meaning even Kraut's own audience, which was initially on his side, grew so bored with this shit, they just didn't want to watch it anymore. But I'm sure that negative reaction didn't adversely affect these mentally unstable individuals. They can't go too magic missile with this LARPing shit, right? It's not like they created operations, like it was World War II or something. Oh, never mind. Yeah, they actually did that. Let's look at some of the 24-hour uh, ops the Brain Trust here came up with. One of the intellectual elites, a chemist by the name of Zabby, came up with Operation Red Mackerel. Goal. To feed the opposition false or useless information of the movements or acts of the allied forces to gain the trust of the opposition and thereby cause information havoc and distress. Execution. The construction of a shadow server where archived or staged conversations and information will be posted. A SOC account controlled by the allied forces will collect evidence on the shadow server and approach the opposition setting off stage three. Ending in the desired effect, total control of oppositional informational networks. Stage 1. The construction of a shadow server. Over two weeks of staged conversations prior to the next media launch. Stage 2. The collection of evidence to be reviewed by proper channels and greenlit for dispersion. Stage 3. The approach of the opposition by insider forces, trying to feed useless information that was cleared in Stage 2, gaining trust. Stage 4. Feeding false information to cause minor disturbances, using false information that is too good not to be used, and observing the effect on the opposition media. When cleared by proper channels, advance to Stage 5. Stage 5. Feeding information of a high-risk nature, false doxes of allied forces, false nudes, etc. Desired effect. Full control of trusted opposition informational networks. Effective use of counter-espionage tactics to puppet opposition forces. The oppositional informational networks. It's a French guy that streams on YouTube and laughs at people talking about pregnant trouts. Is being treated like he's the fucking Axis powers in World War II. But how deep does this autism go? How committed to this are they? We'll have a crowd explain it. Proposal 1. I am a dissident scientist and would like a conversation. Proposal 2. Set up fake alt-right YouTube channels and have it slam me. Proposal 3. I am a biology student. Proposal 4. I am a biochemist student. This is so fucking retarded. Crow, what the fuck are you doing? I, I, you know, I don't even know if I can read this without a deviant art symbol in the background. This is some will you RP with me colon 3 shit. Young woman. Mid-twenties. Specializing right now in biochemistry at the University of Southampton. Name, Tilly Law. December 30th, 1989 is her birthday. Born in Guilford. Hasn't been there since childhood. Parents live in Wickham. Wickham Church of England Primary School. Studying biology for three years since 2015. Lab assistant from 2010 to 2014. Student travels from 2014 to 2015. Backpacked around the UK. Gotta, gotta throw some small details in there. You know, in case that ever comes up in conversation. H hello Hello, Access Forces. I'm a biochemist student named Tilly Law, and I'm defecting from the Allied Forces. You can trust me. I backpacked around the UK. You know, now might be as good a time as any just to take a step back and really think about what you're looking at. <laughs> Look at the reaction they have to somebody laughing at their stupidity or having a different opinion. Look at the detail. They're, they run, they're running operations. Who LARPs like this and doesn't drink bleach immediately afterwards? 
But if that wasn't autistic enough, they have to take the puppeteering to the next level. Let me introduce you to the convoluted plan. Operation Mincemeat. Now this is, uh, this is some wild shit. Their plan, if I were to sum it up, reading this just ridiculous fucking document, is to leak the idea that Thunderfoot or Sargon are going to make videos. That is the information. They're going to accidentally release this information. And then from there, essentially what they want to have happen is the alt-right reacts and gets angry for some reason. And because the alt-right gets angry, now Thunderfoot and Sargon actually end up making the video. You know, Thunderfoot put up a video talking about being invited into this Discord. He wanted me to install Discord on my computer, which I'd never heard of before, and it's some sort of group chat type thing. Which was getting into quite a bit of an ask at that point, because, you know, now I actually had to do something. Anyway, so I installed Discord on my computer, and it promptly crashed my computer. Which means that maybe the only message I've ever sent on Discord is, is it working yet? And after my computer died and I got it back up again, it was simply, look, I, d I don't have time for this sort of crap. It's probably a really fucking good idea that you didn't stick around. Because they don't give a shit about you, Thunderfoot. They don't care that you're a scientist. They don't care that you actually do shit in real life. You weren't Thunderfoot the scientist to them. You were Thunderfoot the cudgel. They wanted to use you. They thought they were so fucking smart and you were so goddamn stupid that they could puppeteer you into doing what they wanted. They were going to use your subscriber number to their benefit. They didn't give two fucks about what you thought. That's what Operation Mincemeat is. Are you starting to get a handle on the wild shit going on in this Discord? Here's the public presenting face these people give up. That they're, that they're honorable and they're dignified and that they fight the good fight and they have the moral high ground. And yet they create hit lists. They come up with fake doxes, fake accounts to discredit the other side. And then they seek to use people to their own ends without actually informing them of what the fucking plan is. And that's an opinion you'll see expressed by multiple people. Just like Waz Lee said, it looks bad calling it this. Not it is bad to have this, but it looks bad to call it this. Sandre says the same fucking thing. It was stupid to contact UKIP Kraut. Not because I care about Rage After Storm, fuck that bitch, but because I foresaw this situation as a possibility. It's used as ammo. Well, I think the best action is to simply demand evidence. He's not going to be able to deliver. By the way, Jeff Holiday, aren't you a neurology student? With all these intellectual heavyweights, all these YouTube scientists, these internet academics, you figure one of them would have rubbed their brain cells together to come up with a, a few questions about the morality of what's going on in this morally righteous, anti-race realism crusading server. You won't just have to deal with the alt-right, you'll have to possibly also deal with AIU's scumfucks. These guys have been taking every single fucking opportunity to get at me. I have seen them siding with Sean and Jen. Edgy Sphinx, Christy Winters, and now with the alt-right at large. Whoever currently is trying to come for me, AIU scumfucks follow suit and also go after those I work with. And be warned, AIU scumfucks are probably the single most vile, reprehensible, and disgusting fucking thing on YouTube. Now they're talking about atheism is unstoppable. Listen to that vitriolic hatred they have for them. The worst thing on YouTube. Now compare that statement to this one. Think we could maybe use that to get Devin to go after Edgy? That would be fun. So on the one hand, they're saying that AIU is the worst fucking thing on the internet. And on the other hand, they want to use him to their own benefit. Just like they wanted to use Thunderfoot. Earlier I showed you the three videos and how the dislike ratio had increased as time went on. People became disillusioned with Kraut. They didn't want to hear about it anymore. The very last of those videos that he had done ended up getting flagged. Now, multiple people mirrored that video, but it was assumed that the alt-right was behind it. Now, why that is, I can't tell you. Because from what I've seen was them actually enjoying watching his videos. Multiple people loved to pick them apart. If anything, it was a festive mood around them because they liked to laugh at how fucking horrible they were. Nonetheless, Kraut and his friends and people that liked his content made all these public statements decrying how terrible it was that that video was flagged. That flagging that video is just, it's an awful fucking thing. 
Fast forward just a little bit, and JF releases a video with audio that was leaked from Kraut's server. He's making a video on it, and what do you know? That video gets flagged down. Now, what's the reaction from Kraut and his assorted, assembled academics? Well, first you have the public statements. We didn't flag that, but if it did get flagged, good, it should have. It was illegal. Those were leaked audio recordings. You don't have a right to play them for anyone. A bit of a difference from what was being said in the Discord. I told you, for fuck's sake, report that stream. Now follow that up with this, an admission from the admin in Kraut's own server that he himself actually flagged the video. Habib. Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Yeah, let me just uh, lower your, your audio just a smidgen bit loud. Okay, um, Habib, you were the admin of that server. I was an admin since day one, yes. Yeah, something that you called me yeah. out on as well. Yeah. And I think since JF in here, I think I better explain myself. And yes, I still stand by flagging your video, JF. So it goes from, we didn't do it, but we're glad that it happened, to we should totally do it, to yeah, we actually did do that. But I think the example that personally gets me the most about this sort of behavior that repeatedly happens in his internet war room would be in relation to the New York Times reporter. Now, as Kraut said, on a live stream, this lady had contacted him and he had invited her into his Discord server. I mean, one thing that JF brought up, which is like the sleaziest thing that he got out of his espionage, um, I was contacted two days ago, no, three days ago by a New York Times journalist um since he brought this up in a weird fucking way i might as well address this as well she was mainly interested not really as much as in me as she was into joan she wanted to know the people i work with so i introduced her to her and i invited her into the server i gave her, her own thread and then i asked all the biologists chemists and psychologists and physicists and what we not all have already to write a summary about the work then I asked and um, why they do this. Then I asked all the YouTubers in the server to write a summary of what they are and why they do this and that. Well, that's all well and good. What's the problem with the New York Times? She just wanted to talk to people. Look at them all giving answers. They're just giving some basic background information. She just wants to know about their fight with the alt-right in relation to race realism. And Kraut's more than happy to help her. I mean, that's not hypocritical at all. Oh, fucking wait a second. Wait a second. I seem to remember something that happened not that long ago. I think it was in this fucking year, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. PewDiePie getting his ass fucked by every mainstream media outlet. Boy, it sure would be funny if the New York Times played a part in that. Oh, shit. They fucking did. Well, I, that doesn't mean anything. It's not like Kraut actually made a video where he denounced them doing. Oh, fuck. He did do that. Men testing boundaries in the angriest corners of the Internet from that cancerous, repugnant cesspit known as BuzzFeed. YouTube's monsters, PewDiePie and his populist revolt from the New York Times. The articles all have the same undertone to them. YouTube is infested with Nazis, racists and other vile scum and it is time to strangle YouTube's creators by cutting down on the financial assets available to them. At least he didn't try to boy- oh fuck he did try to boycott them. That's some nice payback Kraut. That's some really fucking great moral grandstanding on your part. So let me see if I get this straight. You want to boycott the New York Times because you think they report unfairly about YouTubers. You go on a fucking tirade about it. PewDiePie retweets you for defending him. And yet, when the opportunity comes to you to use that very weapon that was used against him, against somebody you don't like, you invite that slimy fuck into your server to help her. And you can look at this lady's timeline to see exactly what she was talking about around that timetable. Look at the alt-right terrible goddamn Nazis. Go look at that article and read it, and then try to plead ignorance with me that you didn't know exactly what she fucking wanted to do. Oh, the New York Times is terrible. Oh, it's coming after PewDiePie. We need to fight the power. So what is it? Do you really have that opinion, Kraut, or did you just want to suck his dick to get some fucking subs out of it? Listen to your ass talking to Naked Ape about how you responded to a Vice News reporter 
in relation to all of this. Hello, Mr. Colwyn. No, I am not with the alt-right, and I have spoken out against the alt-right. I have decided to come in support of De PewDiePie together with the overwhelming majority of, you of the YouTube community because he has been a victim of an injustice. He has been slandered and his reputation dragged through the mud by a big media outlet on the basis of a lie. The actions by the Wall Street Journal have been slanderous and flat-out wrong, and anyone with a basic understanding of ethics should be able to see this for what it is. I also believe that De that if this course of sleazy actions is allowed to continue unchallenged, it will result in the purge of YouTube uh, by a new media platform, by an old, outdated media, namely the print media. What was done to PewDiePie could have just as well been done to everyone on this platform and will probably be done to everyone on this platform if the Wall Street Journal is allowed to get away with this. Oh, we YouTubers are getting branded. We're getting fucked over. It's terrible what the mainstream media is doing. They're not giving us a fair shake. Here, let me let the fucking New York Times reporter from the same outlet that did this shit to somebody I defended into my Discord server to do it to somebody else. Get fucked. What are you doing? What is this autistic shit? Okay, need to, need to calm down a little bit. Getting a little bit, uh, a little bit heated. When you're knee-deep in digging through this shit, it's, it's hard not to come away with a bit of a stink. And the Spurgery, it, it's been going for a week now. And it's, it's multiplying and expanding. It's like a fucking forest fire on the internet. It just, it won't stop. And there's so much of it, and I can't keep track of it all. We haven't even scratched the surface of it all yet. There, there's so much. There's so much retardation going on that... This this doesn't even begin to cover it. And it's only downhill from here. It is only fucking downhill from here. So tune in for part three when we start talking about vibrating nipple clamps. And no, I'm not making that up. Decided to kick it up a notch with a ball pit. Yahoo! Yahoo is right. Let's rock. Who doesn't love a good trash fire? There's no better way to keep warm during those long winter months than by huddling up close and watching the combustion take place before you. And conventions, well, they fit the bill. Now, there are a myriad of them for almost every subject you could imagine. They come and go all year round. And every once in a while, once in a, a blue moon, you'll come across a convention that devolves into complete and utter madness. And that insanity could include a whole host of things, from furries throwing shit-filled nappies onto people's Subarus, to fat tumblerettes swimming in piss-filled ball pits. But it takes a special kind of retard, I'm talking special ed levels of stupid, to fuck a convention up before it even begins. Typically, the convention actually has to happen first before it can devolve into a shit show. But that's not the case with Kilroy. The free speech event, everybody's been talking about it. All your favorite YouTubers are going to be there. It sounds like a fantastic idea, and for a while, it was a fantastic idea. Until the realization of what it was and what it would become started to fully hit people. The first cracks in the facade came from Tim Pool. when on December 11th, he tweeted this out to his followers. For those attending Kilroy in Phoenix this April, I am pulling out and will not be speaking any longer. Apologies to those looking to see me there. And he quickly followed this up with a, a little bit more of an explanation. They asked for a 16-month non-compete and a three-year NDA. They were willing to negotiate on the non-compete, but not the non-disclosure agreement. They cited safety reasons for the three-year NDA. Strange thing to ask, and I can't trust the reasoning for such an agreement. Now, Tim elaborated even more on this in a video he put up for the people that were coming to see him. I was asked to sign a 16-month non-compete agreement and a three-year non-disclosure agreement in order to participate in this event. I find those contracts very strange. I have a speaking agent. I have numerous contracts through United Talent. I speak at events all the time. In fact, this week in New York, I'm speaking at an event on technology. This is not standard. This is not normal. And I was not given an adequate reason as to why any of these provisions, any of these agreements were, were, were asked to be uh, signed. And Tim wasn't alone. 
other people that were scheduled to speak said they had issues with the non-disclosure agreement as well. Things a farce. I mean, the majority of the headliners there, actually all of them have spoken in various locations before. Never in my life. I mean, I get, I've been given contracts, but I've never been given an NDA non-compete that spans several years um, to a 100 mile radius. I mean, that's, that's cuckoo banana cakes. Now, the big motivator for Tim as to why he put the tweets up and the video up was to explain to the people that might have pre-purchased tickets or donated money to come see him. He wanted to explain to them why he wasn't going to be there. People donated and were expecting to see me there. I'm obligated to inform them I will not be. People asked why I wasn't going, and I told them. I've kept a lot private here, but I'm willing to publish everything if people are not satisfied. Well, as it turns out, not everybody was completely satisfied. In particular, the organizer of the event. It isn't strange to ask. It's standard practice. I was clear that I'm not willing to risk the anonymity of dissidents whose lives are at risk for attending and speaking at Kilroy. Calling me out in public isn't going to compel me to bend on this. No one called you out. I'm obligated to inform people that thought I was going that I will no longer be there. But it gets stranger still. One of the featured speakers on the Kilroy page, an account called Harambe Desserts, had this to say, Tim Pool is not an ally to ex-Muslims, and he is going around bad-mouthing and lying about Based Mama, who is an ex-Muslim too. On that fact alone and his lies, he is despicable. Hate, though? He is just a stupid ass. Not worth hating at all. I don't know about that. All I see is people mocking an NDA that protects ex-Muslims. I mean, how much of an ass butt do you need to be? I don't trust that dude, Tim Pool, as far as I can throw him. He obviously is shady and selfish as anything for making a big deal out of the NDA. I'm fairly certain Tim Pool doesn't know who he's fucking with. Neither did I when I responded to this insane bullshit calling him a bad ally for having issues with an NDA contract. Because I received this response. Dude is in for a rude awakening with us. Oh yes. Don't ever fuck with ex-Muslims. You will regret it. Don't fuck with us. You're gonna regret it. I wonder what she meant by that. You leave us alone, we'll leave you alone. You fuck our shit up, we'll fuck your shit up until you can't fuck our shit up anymore. I'm a former Muslim, a former extremist, a former terrorist supporter. Well, these sound like some stable and well-adjusted individuals. I'm sure I'm just misreading that playful tweet as a threat. I can do a whole lot better for threats if you want. It can be a game. Well, I do love video games, so I couldn't pass that challenge up. And it looks like it was answered. Because yesterday, when I put up a tweet promoting this video and what the topic would be on, all of the sudden, from out of nowhere, a complete and utter coincidence. Videos started getting flagged on my channel. That's rather strange. It's almost like somebody was attempting to shut the channel down so this video couldn't go up. But why would they do that? What would motivate them to want to shut this particular video down? Oh, maybe it has to do with the fact that Based Mama was a part of Kraut Server, the server that was targeting people on the right side of politics. Could, could that have something to do with it? I mean, Based Mama was in there. She admits she was in there. I'm going to let you know right now. I got invited in. And then I just never left. And good old Halal Desserts here, well, she was uh, somewhat related to it as well. If you remember back when JF's video was flagged for playing audio that was leaked from the server Kraut had, she tweeted this out. I have no idea what I flagged. I hope it was real juicy. Ah ha 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 ha. So we have two individuals directly related to the Kilroy event, one of them the organizer of it, another her good friend and featured speaker at the event, both related to a server which was doing some rather underhanded things. And mysteriously, when I announce my videos coming out, I start getting videos flagged on my account. Really gets that fucking noggin jogging, doesn't it? But I guess I, uh, I'm getting intellectually checkmated here. This is some 4D chess shit. I'm dealing with intellectual giants. Because my IQ is extremely high. <sighs> it is extremely frustrating to not only be an intellectual anomaly myself, which I guess like, you know, 140 is above average or whatever. You know. Most well-known and credentialed scientists of this YouTube community. But apparently that enormous IQ, it just wasn't enough. People began to either pull out or they were pushed out of the event. The list is so goddamn long that you'd have a better chance naming the people that are still coming rather than the ones that dropped out. Tim Poole, Dave Cullen, Faith Goldie, James Alsep, Andrew Torba, Brittany Pettibone, Millennial Woes, Nick Monroe, Andy Worski and Chris, Peter Sweden, Baked Alaska, Lauren Southern. The names go on and on and on. 
But that's just petty ego. I mean, that's what Monday Matt told me. These people are just too full of themselves. That's the issue. And then, of course, Sargon dropped out. I haven't been following the recent drama with Kilroy too closely, but I'm going to pull out of it anyway. It seems to be mismanaged. I put $250 into it, but I don't expect to get that back. Fucking Sargon of a God with his goddamn ego issues, huh, Matt? Oh, I'm sorry, what's what's that? Did you change your position all of a sudden? Matt, is Sargon being a drama whore for pulling out since you said this is mostly an ego thing? <laughs> with Sargon, I'm not too sure. Oh! oh so would I do it? Would I do it? And I have Andy, to... Andy, come on. Wait, Andy, wait, come on. Let me... Quick, somebody send this clip to V. He's always getting accused of being the Sargon of a Cod dick rider. It looks like he's got a little competition for the job. Well, goddamn, that's a lot of people getting kicked out or dropping out. But was it all because of contracts? Was it all because of the non-disclosure agreement and the non-compete that Faith Goldie and Tim Pool talked about? Well, no, there were a whole host of other issues. People were complaining that they weren't getting their emails answered. They were being ignored. We were getting ignored. A lot of the concerns were, get, were getting ignored until it was put in front of the public. Um, well, I and- just, I'm sorry. I really, I, that's not a fair representation. They're not, they weren't being ignored. So I sent an email to, to Base Mama. I say, hi, some weird stuff is going on over there, y'all. What is going on? Oh, my buddy's getting disinvited. We can't talk about what we want to talk about. James now, his picture's gone. What's going on, guys? Fill us in. And I get a response email that is completely blank from Base Mama's account. So what does that tell me? And I responded back to her. I said, hi, it's just so you know, I got a blank email. Don't know if you intended to write something in it. But indeed, nothing showed up. But that can't be correct, because as you can hear from Sister Danger and Based Mama, the two people that are working on the event, they never forget to respond to an email. They're professionals. And I'm like, dude, I understand. <laughs> like, uh-huh. you don't even have to tell me. Like, I'm at that where, did I miss one? Did I miss one? Well, you know, you talk to me. I'm like maniacally checking to make sure I didn't accidentally not see somebody's email, because I don't want to forget anybody. I agree. Like, I kind of have this general policy of, always be the last person to respond right that way the ball is never left in your court as having been dropped or whatever like always be the last person to respond she left my email unanswered well there's got to be more than just a a few missed emails is there anything else going on like say being lied to about the panels you can do i had pitched the idea uh for for doing a panel on offensive comedy and where the line is and how we present ourselves online uh based mama uh, uh, declined immediately. Well, there must be a good reason Andy Worski was told he couldn't do a panel on offensive comedy. Like, say, one of Base Mama's associates was already going to do it, and Andy can go fuck himself. Foxy here, <laughs> he hasn't said shit about fuck this whole time, <laughs> um, <laughs> is going to be on the comedy panel and, and basically discuss like how you know, the restriction of free speech in this offense culture is really kind of hampering comedy where you just you can't be as free with it as you want to be. How's that dicking feel, Andy? Probably similar to what James Elsop got when he was bent over and hit with this gem. She said my speech on identitarianism was banned because it was a topic that she didn't want to bring up at the conference. This is, of course, contradicted by the fact that listed in the topic she, she sent me was a speech called The History of Identitarianism in Ireland. I find it funny that... There's been kerfuffle from the alt-right side because I won't entertain a panel on identitarian politics. I'll go ahead and tell you. Here's the reason why. And I told everybody this. We don't have time. We don't have the space. It's not on the agenda. Listed in the topic she, she sent me was a speech called The History of Identitarianism in Ireland. It's just a kerfluffle. Come on. Everybody makes mistakes, and the super genius brain trust over here, they fucked up a little bit. But they're innocent fuck-ups. There's no ulterior motive behind any of it. It's not like this is one giant fucking scam that sucked in multiple groups of people. That would be ridiculous. I mean, listen to Andy. He came up with this idea at VidCon. It was our idea. Um, I was one of the initiators of this idea. It was me, Chris, my buddy who I filmed with, um, Failure, Rucka, and I think, what was his name? Tanuki or Toki or something? Failure? What was his name? It starts with a T. Do you know uh, who I'm talking about? Yeah, well, Tanuki. Okay, or that's it. It was all of us. 
and we were all at that shrimp place during VidCon, and we were the ones who were like, oh, we should do our own VidCon where it's like all of us and we can meet, you know, viewers and stuff and talk about whatever we want. And then we were all just hanging out outside and Sister Danger was there. We brought it up to her and she's like, that's a great idea. You know, I've done I've done these things before. And then when she spoke to Based Mama and Dave, they sort of took a hold of that. Well, isn't that wonderful? Based Mama is going to help Andy realize his dream to put on this idea for a convention. But wait a minute, though. That's not what Based Mama told Bunty King. This has been in the works for quite a while. (laughs) So I'm just... How how long has this been in the works for, if you mind me asking? About three years. We've been... Three years. Three years we've been having this with with Dave. No, um, I, I was planning it with Kevin... That's really strange. When I Google VidCon, it shows me that it ran from the 21st to the 25th, and the social media accounts for the Kilroy event went up after VidCon, which would seem to substantiate what Andy Worski is saying. Yet there's Based Mama telling Bunty King this is something she's been working on for three years. Well, that's a bit of an inconsistency. I mean, all she wants to do is help establish this event. Oh, wait, did I say event? I meant business. Most NDAs are indefinite, so I I put a three-year limit on it because I'm like, well, that's plenty of time to establish our business model and streamline the process so other people can take Kilroy to their cities, you know, and do their thing, and, like, we can help them out with getting contracts and, you know, contracting with vendors and venues and doing all this shit. Like, I was like, yeah, that's cool. Like, we had a fucking plan. It wasn't like we just pulled this shit out of our asses. Yeah, let's franchise that fucker out. Hey, let's take it even further. How about some trademarks and copyrights? What we what we could do is trademark um, our brand for Kilroy slash Kilroy was here. Hell, even throw in a few employment cons, I mean, NDAs and non-disclosure agreements. These contracts are the same as going to going to employment, not the same. I'm sorry. I'm going to really take that back because I already got raked over the coal. That sounds like a recipe for success, but definitely not what Andy Worski and a whole host of other people signing up for this particular event thought when they signed up for it. Ooh, oh, God, I'm getting so sleepy here. I'm just going to stop thinking about it. I don't want my ego to get in the way. Hey, guys, let's go take a nap. Anybody else getting tired? I mean, all that matters at the end of the day is that business loan gets taken care of. So when I go into these places six months ago, trying to secure spots, they're like, we want a deposit now. So I took out a loan to put down the deposit. So oh, like, wow. I'm into this shit for like $30,000 already. <laughs> oh, wow, I didn't know that. I don't think well, anybody yeah. knew that. I must have misheard her. I could have sworn she just said that she took those loans out six months ago, which would have been in June, right after VidCon. No, clearly she meant three years ago. Fuck you, Andy Worski. You don't know what you're talking about. I know that look you're giving me. Take the fucking tinfoil hat off. These are all just amazing coincidences. You fucking conspiracy theorist with your crazy shit. I mean, sure, you could look at the timetable and draw some conclusions about what's really going on here and all the lies that we've heard. Or all those other lies. Oh, did I mention all the other lies? Like the lies they told Tim Pool about the contract he was signing? And as I responded to their email, email, I told them it was insulting. To which they responded with an appeal to popularity. Everyone has signed this before you. That's a lie. A lot of the speakers didn't even know this agreement existed. No, they certainly did not sign this before me. Or the whole thing about having to remove people because there just wasn't enough room. I'm sorry, Baked Alaska, we need to trim the fat a little bit. It's too popping off in here for you to stick around. We got too many speakers showing up. And we still have approximately a week's worth of guests that we're going to continue to roll out. And we're still signing people, okay? Then we immediately took Baked Alaska off the website because we were already overbooked, okay? You you are saying... Tomorrow you have a guest sure. announcement. Yet when to Alaska, you said that there was a scheduling conflict. Yeah, you guys are overbooked. Already full. And now you're but, still adding people to the roster when you already told people that you were overbooked. No. No. Yeah, that's not a good look. That was a lie that was caught in the very same fucking stream later on. And in other streams too. I'm sure are, are, are all put together an email or, for you. <laughs> Are all the it, it panels is, already scheduled out with all the people that are coming, or? No, we left. We intentionally left a good chunk open. It's so weird. It feels like everything about this event might be completely fucking fake, and it only gets worse if you look at the timetable. 
When Dave Cullen put up the initial fundraising video for the Kilroy event on November 16, it only took a matter of three weeks for them to hit the official goal of $85,000. That's fucking impressive. That is a lot of money. December 6th, we've raised all the money we need. And that's just the amount listed up on the website. We're not even talking about PayPal here. Um, you can pledge anonymously without buying a ticket. You can give any amount that you want. I, you know, it's not a big deal. Like... I got to tell you, I, I appreciate everybody who's buying tickets, but I appreciate more people who can't be there that are still supporting it. Like, that, to me, that's so awesome. So you've got all these big YouTubers from a diverse group of people that are bringing in all this audience for you. And all these people are paying enormous amounts of money to meet people they want to see in real life. If you look at the rewards on the website, that's clearly listed. And yet, strangely, so very strangely, a majority of people start to run into issues. It starts with Baked Alaska, who was up on the website for a day or two, just long enough for his followers to donate money, but not long enough for him to figure out what the fuck is going on. Let me clue you in, Baked. You got used like a puppet, just like everybody in this situation got fucked over. You've all been bamboozled. You are a nice shiny object to wave out in front of retards to get the money to come in. And then once the money came in, suddenly we have issues. Panels aren't showing up. Emails aren't going out. Ridiculous contracts are being forced on people. It's almost like they wanted to use YouTubers for marketing. This is a very important concern <laughs> right here. Is um, a lot of the uh, of the donations were made under the promise that uh, under the promises that certain guests would be appearing, uh, and you put the, the guest list up there, and people saw who were who, who was on that list and donated to see mm -hmm. certain people and then as people start pulling out and as as you know all these complications are happening doesn't it seem like the donations and the event itself was made under a you know false promotion i wanted to put people up for the crowdfunder that people kind of knew you know like they could see them and knew who they were um, just as part of the marketing and then I didn't I didn't I didn't go out of my way to show that there were academics who were actually attending that we're gonna be talking about other things and not on YouTube not internet celebrities or whatever so we've got like a reward system in the works and and meeting up with people is gonna be one of the uh, one of the rewards so they could fund academics who weren't as popular. I'm trying to be amenable to them as much as I can, but they're not really that big and they're not really that influential, especially when we're, we're courting like academics, like actual academics, not pretend YouTube academics. Like we're actually going for people who are actually like researching in these fields and making progress in, in these areas and actually like working for this well, don't make so them i'm not like super fire concerned fire. about it because yeah. that's well the the problem is like i said i think my the biggest mistake i made was not making it clear that this is not a youtube convention and no. a lot of like we can't list a lot of people that are on there that are very left-leaning because they're a fucking security risk that's why I open call. I didn't want just people who are YouTube famous. YouTube famous, internet famous, that doesn't mean anything. To well, the only thing that could make this shit show worse if there was a political angle on it. I mean, we fucked over YouTubers and built their audience for money. But could we fuck over political opponents just for the fun of it? Well, I think we could if we follow a few steps. Now, if you remember Kraut Server with all his magnificent 24-hour ops like Purple Starfish or whatever the fuck he called this dumb shit, Based Mama was in there. She was right in that fucking server. And in that server, there was a hit list. And surprisingly, a good amount of the people on that hit list were signed up to show up at the event. People like James Alsip, Baked Alaska, Lauren Southern. These people and their audiences donated money or bought tickets. They were used to help promote this. I wonder if she has any political opinions on these people. Okay, first of all, there's about 70% of the people on there that I don't politically align with, and there's a couple of them, I won't name names, that I actually do not like as a person. Because I think it'll be great to kind of bring social justice back to where it's supposed to fucking be. Yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> Girl power. Let's bring social justice back to where it needs to be. Fuck those white nationalists. But don't fuck their money. We need their money. We have a $30,000 business loan to pay off and trademarks to apply for. Well, Jim, that doesn't prove any malice on her part. Well, as she said, she is Kilroy. Because at the end of the day, Kilroy is just me. And the Kilroy social media page that's up only has like 130 tweets. 
So it's really weird then, isn't it, that a social media account used to promote a free speech event would be retweeting Crouton T advertising his dirty trick server. If she's calling the shots, and this is her event, and her event is officially promoting him by retweeting him on their official fucking account, raises a few questions, doesn't it? It's a twofer, really. You get a bunch of gullible YouTubers to promote your event, which you let them think is actually their event, but you have no real intention of ever letting them show up and speak. Now, you go about this by a myriad of different ways, by making panels inaccessible, losing emails, creating contracts which are just purely ridiculous in the hopes that it will drive them away or anger them to make room for all those top-tier intellectual academics that you've always dreamed of gathering together in one place to have 48 panels on Muslim this and Muslim that. And you also get to take all this money from right-wing sources which you disagree with, people you find abhorrent, and then basically just throw them off the website. Kick them off, remove their name, it doesn't matter, you've already got the cash. Sometime last week I was dropped from the Kilroy speakers list without notice. That's how you know you're dealing with true professionals. Seems pretty cut and dry to me. For that three-week period of fundraising, there weren't contracts sent out. There weren't NDAs discussed. Everybody seemed to be taken by surprise at the very end, after the money was gathered. Then, once the money was in that bank account, suddenly we have issues. Suddenly we need to clear some room, make some space for the important people, not you fucking YouTubers. You don't matter. But hey, you've still got things to look forward to at Kilroy. I mean, sure... Sargon's not going to be in the ball pit. That's a bit disheartening. I think we all really wanted to see him just swimming around in his natural environment, but sadly that's just not going to happen. But at least he can show up for the fights. The good old fisticuffs. I'm talking Jeff Holiday throwing down with Coach Red Pill. Can you, can you just not be a pussy about it? You know something? I'm going to go to the Kilroy event. Okay, good. Come to the Kilroy event. I'm going to go to the Kilroy event, and I'm going to look you up. When, when you find me at Kilroy, that you were just saying, Coach, that you're going to come find me at Kilroy, what are you going to do when you find me? You're going to give me a big old sloppy kiss? Mm -hmm. You'd love that, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. I love older men. So what are you going to do? You're saying you're going to come and you're going to find me at Kilroy. What are you going to do? We're going to have a chat. You're going to buy me a burger? You'll be talking, but I won't be talking much, probably. Okay. So you're going you're gonna to patiently sit there and you're going to listen and, and absorb everything that I have to say and... That'd be great. Cool. Sounds good. Is that it? Is that all you're going to do when you, when you come to Kilroy, man? Or Johnny Fox taking on Monday Matt? Here's the, I, I, no, I follow up on this. Like, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Johnny, you want to have this conversation in person, dude? I'm all for it. Get your ass to oh, Phoenix in fucking I'm April. For right, whether you're going to Kilroy 1 or Kilroy 2, I'm whatever he's know, making, he why don't you come on out? Why don't you come on out? Come on out. Well, I'm a good come on out, sir. Well, that is my, that's my suggestion. Come on out. Come on out. Come on, let's have a conversation. Come on, get on that plane, Johnny. Get on that horse. Brother. Get your ass out of Phoenix. Come on. That sounds like some good old fun. Who doesn't want to watch people beat the shit out of each other? This sounds like a fantastic event. And hopefully, Kilroy's a great success for them because they're going to need the money, you know, with breaking the law and all. Oh, did I, did I forget to mention that part? You know that three-week crowdfunder they had where they had a ton of people's names up, raising money to show up at the event, and how they sent contracts out after that, after December 6th, after the money had been raised? Turns out that might have been completely fucking illegal. Don't take my word for it. Ask Based Mama. But then I got a second problem, which I found out the other day, is I can't advertise people that I don't have signed on to speak. Yeah. Because that would be violating false advertising laws in Arizona. So if I'm understanding this right, she's basically admitting that she illicitly raised $85,000. Brilliant. That is 140 IQ, ladies and gentlemen. Because my IQ is extremely high. <gasps> it is extremely frustrating to not only be an intellectual anomaly myself, which I guess like, you know, 140 is above average or whatever. If you take on the alt-right, you will lose. And you'll you'll look pretty fucking stupid at the end of it. And here's why. We in the alt-right ceased caring about social acceptability some time ago. And we are, as a result of that, quite sometimes quite brash and mindlessly offensive, sure, but also we are looking for the truth. We are courageous. And we are speaking the truth. By contrast, 
you in the skeptic community, quite frankly, are a bunch of lying, ignorant, cowardly, beta, weaklings. We are ready for you. Believe me. Oh boy, we've got an internet war. There's nothing more exciting than watching LARPers on both sides go at it on the digital landscape, hurling insults like cannonballs across social media, gathering their forces together on YouTube to put out a hot new video to take down the other motherfucker. And this saga, this saga has been one of the larger battles in that internet war between, as Millennial Woes puts it, the alt-right and the skeptics, the skeptics, the skeptics, the skeptics, the s That's right, the skeptics. That's a Bunty King pictured here with his adoptive family at the tender age of eight. There's been a little bit of a heated conflict between the two groups, and Kraut was seen as a general among the skeptic forces trying to take the battle to the alt-right. Now, we've covered a lot of stuff, a lot of the dirty details of what went down in Kraut's server. Talked about the origin of what started it all. And we talked about a few of the offshoots from the personalities which inhabited that server. A server, might I remind you, that was stock full of YouTube academics. My academics. And individuals that have watched the sixth season of Rick and Morty. Because my IQ is extremely high. They had some firepower behind them, but they just couldn't win the fight fair. They needed to get dirty. They needed to smear their opponents. We talked a little bit about it in the second video, the super secret 24 hour operations that they were running across the internet. Who can forget the captivating Tom Clancy-esque spy saga of Tilly Law? A, ge a genius idea by a mastermind puppeteer. Nobody could see through that. <laughs> Even though everything was misspelled, she's still a highly intelligent chemistry student. But we only really scratched the surface. I saved the best part for last. In this finale, we're going to talk about the main issue with the server, the thing that really brought it to a head, got the public's attention, and basically led to Kraut self-exiling himself from the internet. And to do that, I need to introduce you to Coach Red Pill. Now, Coach Red Pill is a YouTuber that makes videos that lean to the right, as you probably could surmise from his username. And if you're not familiar with his videos, you're probably familiar with his use of cameras. At least if you've posted on 4chan within the last two weeks, you'll know it when you see it, it's Coach Posting. Now, Coach was no friend of Kraut. In fact, you could say their relationship was downright antagonistic. Coach was very open about his opinion on what he thought of Kraut releasing multiple videos within a short succession talking about his reaction to the Rage After Storm incident. And in each subsequent video, the criticism grew harsher and harsher. Now, these sorts of criticisms and videos aren't inconsistent with Coach's video style. In fact, he released videos even earlier than this, taking shots at the skeptic community. But I think what really got Kraut's attention were the ones that were personally addressed to him. I could almost nail it down to a specific thing that I think really set him on the path of wanting revenge against Coach Redpill. And the reason I didn't care for his voice is that I realized something almost immediately when I listened to him. He's faking his accent. You see, the kind of accent that he uses, or he tries to use rather, is known as RP, received pronunciation. Now, received pronunciation is not a regional accent. In point of fact, it's a social accent, if you will. It's the form of speech that British upper class kids learn in private school, usually boarding school. He's faking his accent. Now, why would that be important? What about that would bother Kraut so much? Well, to understand that, you need to know a little bit about Kraut. From what I understand, he was initially a high school dropout who had to go to night courses to get his degree. And so there's a bit of a chip on his shoulder. And here comes this guy, Coach, Coach Red Pill, saying that he's a phony, that he's not as intelligent as he's presenting himself to be. We've all heard Kraut's statements for the last couple of months about his YouTube scientists, about my academics, about all those biology books he's reading. He desperately wants to put forward the facade that he is well-educated and highly intelligent. And yet, here comes this YouTuber who basically calls him out and says, you're faking your accent to try to sound more intelligent than you really are. Imagine how pissed off Kraut would be. 
Again, this is the same man that created a super secret server to hunt down the alt-right and right-wingers because people didn't take his reaction to Rage After Storm particularly well. He's the sort of individual that once you slight him, he doesn't forget it. If he has a vendetta, he'll take that to his fucking grave unless he puts you in one first. If I find the guy who dogs my brother, I will squeeze the life out of his throat. I will stay until I watch you burn. And I will force feed the ashes of your children down your is this throat. This genuine. That isn't intimidating at all. It's not threatening at all, ah. is it now? Is this genuine? A boot stomping on your face. So what does this building animosity lead to? What what actually ends up happening after Coach Red Pill does this? And what's Kraut has his server established to go to war with the alt right? Well, that's where the doxing comes in. Oh boy, can you can I use that word? Is it doxing with one X or two X's? Are we talking private information or hacked information? There's been so many different definitions bandied about by all the individuals that are involved in this. About what constitutes doxing, it seems everybody has a different fucking opinion on it. But you know what? Because this is Kraut we're talking about, let's go with his definition on it. So Kraut, was there doxing going on in your server? As many of you are aware, three months ago I have opened up a Discord server with the intention of gathering together biologists, chemists and other academics with YouTubers willing to make videos on race realism. About a week ago we were suddenly confronted with accusations that we were running a doxing platform. We were stunned by those accusations and we did not know where they were coming from, consequently acting abrasive and angry towards those who leveled the accusations. We have now, through the help of The Guardian, who you may know on Twitter as the Guardian underscore 002 and who was also a member of our server learned that a member was in fact gathering docs of people. Zef, who was introduced to me by Liz who I had known for two years and trusted that she wouldn't be coming in here with malicious intentions. Well there you go. There were docs on that server at least according to Kraut but he didn't do nothing. He's a good boy. He's innocent. A sweet little Germanic angel. It was all that fucking alien's fault. That alien of ill repute and his lady Liz. I mean, you heard it yourself in the apology video. Except for the fact that it was complete and utter bullshit. And another attempt by Kraut to misinform people and throw others under the bus to save his own ass. So let me paint you a picture of the most autistic shit I can. I hope you're ready for this to get gayer than you thought possible. I'd like to call this... Operation Chocolate Starfish. There aren't going to be any Tilly Laws involved, but I'll try to keep it interesting. This all begins back on November 3rd with this conversation between Kraut and Zev. I have Coach Red Pill's real name. Zev. Whoa, how did you get it? Kraut then invites him into a private conversation. Weeks later, on November 19th, it's happening. Jim's friends are on the case. We now have to sit back. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute. What if Zev doctored that image? How do we know that that's actually legitimate? How do we know it's real? Well, you're going to hear audio that confirms this later on, but let me continue with my timeline. The very next day, Jeff Holliday and Coach Red Pill get into a bit of a tiff on Twitter. You can hear them talking about this encounter on a Worski live stream. My claim is that you've sent a tweet to CRP at some point in your life which included the first name on coach, of Coach Red Pill in a way that was threatening of the, of the fact that you knew about him more than he wants to be exposed, that incorrect. you knew private information about him. Is that correct? correct? No, incorrect. Absolutely incorrect. I called him Gus. His name is not Gus. So Coach Red Pill, is that true that your name is not Gus? Yeah, because he uh, misremembered it and thought my name was Gustavo. It's not Gustavo. But in another uh, tweet, he used my actual first name. Uh, and in oh, yeah. subsequent yeah. tweets, yeah. tweet, he, said guts, bro. Uh, he referred to a, um, a former and incorrect, uh, uh, a former business associate in a way that was suggestive that he had embarrassing information and intended to use it to smear me. JF accuses Jeff Holiday of having Coach's real name and information and trying to intimidate him with it on Twitter. Jeff denies this, but Jeff not being very smart, apparently, within a matter of, I'm not fucking joking, within like 15 seconds, changes his fucking story and says this. Jeff, why did you use the word Gus? Does it mean something in English, Gus? 
Gus? No, I just used Gus. And yeah, it was to infer, like, dude, I do know who you are, but fucking Jesus Christ, will you leave me alone? Jesus Christ, Jeff, pull yourself together. At least be consistent in the bullshit you're telling people. Don't fucking flip-flop within 15 seconds of yourself. And the tweet they're referring to is archived, and that went out on November 4th. So on November 3rd, Kraut has Coach Red Pill's information. Within 24 hours, Jeff Holiday is so fucking excited, he tweets it in a subtle, intimidating way at Coach Red Pill as a kind of, aha, I gotcha. Hey, Jeff, what's your uh, personal opinion on people that use information about somebody they don't want out there in an effort to intimidate them? Do you have, do you have any deeply held beliefs on that? <clears throat> What do you think of doxing? If you dox somebody, you're a cunt. Is revealing somebody's name the same thing as doxing? Subjectively, maybe. Um, that depends. It depends on the context. Depends on a few different things. But I will say, intentionally revealing somebody's name who didn't want it is an intimidation tactic. And if you do it, you're a cunt. Oh, so I guess you're a fucking cunt, huh, Jeff? I guess, I guess you're a fucking cunt. Now, fast forward to November 19th, when Kraut says, Jim's friends are going to take care of it. Oh, hashtag Jim knew. Hash, hashtag Jim New. What, what is he referring to? Well, he's talking about a thread up on a forum called Kiwi Farms, a thread that was started by Fedora Man Man, who happens to be King of Pole. King of Pole is friends with The Guardian, and that thread went up on November 18th. Now, this is why it gets really gay, because this is what I honest to God believe Kraut was trying to do with Operation Chocolate Starfish. Kraut wanted to use the docs he had on Coach Red Pill, but he didn't want to openly do it himself, so he needed an intermediary. He brings in the Guardian and says, I have this information. The Guardian takes that information and hands it off to a friend of his, an acquaintance, King of Pole. King of Pole then puts the information out publicly on Kiwi Farms. This ends up giving Kraut some deniability. Because King of Pole isn't in the server, you can't connect him to it. The only way to do that is to know that King of Pole knows Guardian, and Guardian knows Kraut. So what happens if that scenario plays out? Well, this is where Zeph comes in. Zeph has a bad reputation for doing underhanded, dirty shit to people. And what better fall-down guy would exist for that particular scenario? So, say, somebody figured out that King of Pole got the information from Guardian, and Guardian got it from Kraut. Well, Kraut can put up an apology video, just like he did, that said, Zeph did it, not me. What he wasn't counting on was the fact that Zeph had screen caps and audio recorded of Kraut, they completely fucking tank his bullshit excuse. If you look back at those operations they were trying to run, every single one of them involved manipulating people. Each and every one of them was trying to fool others and get them to do their bidding. And this falls in line with what I believe Kraut really wanted to do. He wanted to use the Guardian. He wanted to use King of Pole. He wanted to use Zeph and Liz and anybody else he could in his autistic war against the alt-right because he was fucking angry. Angry and embarrassed, and he would do anything it took to get back at them. And that willingness to use any tactic to win extends far beyond just Coach Red Pill or even the flagging of the videos of Jean-Francois. It goes into the territory of lying in bed with your enemy, with those goddamn SJWs. I, I see... Old uh, I see, Spiner, that you found the video. Yes. Why I'm not watching this shit. online. Just, I'm, I'm just gonna... I mean... Um, Spiner. Spiner. Spiner, oh, please. Yeah. I'm not sure <clears throat> if you could hand this over to your SJW friend. I'm not sure if that's a good idea. No. But um, they're, if they're, you do not, it... Um, they're not in favor of doxing. I, um... No, it's not even a dox, but if you do it, don't tell them you have it from me. Because I can't I can't afford this shit. I found it by coincidence. I thought it was funny. I added it into this thread. Let that uh, let that sink in for a minute. Kraut was going to have Spinosaurus get in touch with his SJW friends to use information Kraut provided to target somebody. Even fucking Spinosaurus says, We don't dox. We don't do that. And yet Kraut is trying to convince him to do it for him. You can hear the worry in his voice. He doesn't want the dirt coming back on him. It's another example of this attempted manipulation of other people to get them to do his dirty work and using them as a tool to that end. So our poor little cucky alien... Oh, did, did I forget to mention Zeph is a cuck? How do you feel about the fact that Wiz is living with her ex-husband? Yeah, and you're not most likely, if reality is a thing, 
uh, taking the dick from him. What's what's your opinion on that situation, Seth? Okay, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you guys an honest answer. I'll, I'll I'll give you Schmeckel an honest answer. Mm, one, one. I don't I don't really care for Fred being there, honestly. But th- then again, we have an emotional connection, not a sexual one. That emotional connection. It's long distance. We love each other in our souls. That's a that's a bit embarrassing. And if you're wondering just what it is that Zeph and Liz have against Jean Francois, remember she was the one saying flag that video. Well, this clip might have something to do with it. Zeph seems to be in a uh, loving relationship with another YouTuber named Liz <laughs> Reptil, who I've been knowing for years. And I will say that uh, this uh, Liz once offered me to go fuck her. Zeph is a cock. His uh, girlfriend literally offered me to have my dick inside of her. My God, Zev, how many people are fucking cucking you? Do you do you keep a tally board above your bed? Like, hey, holy shit, man! Maybe get a new girlfriend. Just a just a friendly tip. Nevertheless, it appears that Zeph was intended to be a fall guy. Not even Jeff Holiday, whose story has changed from time to time, was the one that originally found it. Regardless of what he says. And you're able to come to this conclusion based on the conversation that Kraut had with Sargon. Now, the following conversation is just fucking amazing for a whole host of reasons, which we'll get into after we listen to some choice clips. But I want to give you a feeling of the dynamic between these two, the relationship between Kraut and Sargon, and how that comes into play later on. Fuck this shit. I'm going to turn up my sandboxes. You will be able to hear what Sargon's saying. And okay. remind yourself, you can whisper into my ears, but just whisper into my ears. What do you, what do you mean? You you will be the only one that's on Sargon, you mean? Yeah, and we'll, inv- we'll be advising him. Yeah, because Sargon insists that I'm the only one who talks to him. Uh, but, but what, okay, so so what exactly is this? Is this live or is it recorded? It, I think it's recorded. Alright, hold on. Yeah, no, let's no, useless, no useless conversations. Um... Like, I'm gonna have to audio, 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 audio. Where's the fucking audio? <laughs> hey, hey, uh, I'm, I'm having a brief audio issue. I just quickly need to ah, fuck fix it. Ah, ah, shite. So at the very mere mention that the Don himself is calling up Kraut, he flips his shit. He needs to gather together all his YouTube scientists, all those academics, so they can whisper sweet little nothings in his ear. Because he's he's dealing with the big guy. And God knows Kraut is scared shitless of that. Are you echoing? No, no, you you seem fine. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, um... So what is this exactly about? Is this the Uzulu thing? Oh, it's the whole thing, really, to be honest. Hmm. Well, if it's also about the JF thing, I can only repeat what the people I'm working with have told me. No, 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 it's not going to be about the science, obviously. I mean, no, the, the reasons why I don't debate JF. Well, is it all right if I record this? Because this is important. And I, I think it's just bad to well, be okay. honest. That's a bit of a strange reaction, I'd say. You know, going into a conversation with somebody you know, you're friends with on Skype, and then saying, I need to be able to record this, but let's find out what's on Sargon's mind. So let's talk about what's happening, because I find all of this honestly kind of perplexing, right? Um, I don't know why you are engaging in the sort of culture war tactics the SJWs engage in against the alt right. And I've said to you repeatedly, privately that you shouldn't do this this is a waste of time and it's not a good thing to do and you are doing it anyway so i'm i'm curious to know why you're doing it i i really don't see the advantage i i have to ask what exactly do you mean with cultural tactics well you know what? digging up people's pasts trying to uh, sort of smear them to make them look bad things like that i have no idea what you're talking about come on no, I, I honestly have no idea what come you're talking Come on, man, come on. No, you have to give me a specific example. Hello? Okay, like, finding Coach Red Pill's past. Like, the, this sort of thing. Like, digging up... Who, who are the other people? There are, there are other people that you've... Um, what the fuck? You know, you've been digging stuff up on and, and stuff, and it's like, I don't, I don't see the point in any of that. Once again, we have Kraut just outright fucking lying. 
I mean, it's a, it's a common theme that we've seen throughout every one of these videos recounting everything that he's done. It's manipulation and deception interwoven with one another. And here he is in a conversation with Sargon, somebody you're going to find out that he shared information with, denying that he had any information. I, these people are not very intelligent. Sorry about that. Right. So You, you kind of ambushed him, me, me here with that, didn't you? No, I don't think so. I think this is what you've been doing. Well, I can, uh, I can I'm explain to you ways. exactly what I've been doing. I've been in a server on Discord mm -hmm. with mainly a group of chemistry students and biologists going through papers. That's the main thing I have been doing for weeks now. Okay. And that's weeks. Fine. Yeah. But like, <clears throat> like saying things like, like you, you've, you know, you've said that you've had Ryan f information or something. Oh, that's, that's, and... that's, that's something completely have f information. Um, do you know who f is? Like no, I, I there, there's something care. important. The thing. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I don't care either. I specifically address him as alternative hypothesis in my videos because that is what his fucking name is on yeah, YouTube. I don't bring up I don't bring up the things that he did in the past in my videos. So not only does it extend beyond Coach Red Pill, but now they're talking about alternative hypothesis having information on him as well. And Sargon seems to be aware of this. He seems to know that Kraut is gathering together this information, that he's going to use it. As Sargon repeatedly will say, it's it's morally wrong to do this. Okay, but I, I, I think you're downplaying this, right? Um, because I think you've gone into culture war mode. And I just want to say that, like, there's, like, from, from, a, from a, a moral position, I don't see this as being moral good. I see this as being moral are evil. The alt-right are a weak fringe group. They, they, it doesn't matter if they appear to be bad people. So it's a pointless exercise. I don't see it as a pointless exercise. We agreed on this okay. in the past. But it, it is a pointless exercise. And the thing is, I also don't see it as a moral good. It's not morally good. So Kraut and Sargon have this conversation. Kraut shares the audio with everybody in his Discord server so they can give him tips on how to win Sargon over. Sargon is apparently recording it for his own protection in regards to what they're discussing. But a few facts come out. Kraut has this information. Sargon is aware that Kraut has this information. And Sargon feels that it is morally wrong what he's doing. So what was the reaction? What was the fallout once the call ended? How did Kraut and his Discord buddies react to Sargon's statements and his viewpoint on what they were doing? Fuck me. I, I think well, it sounds like, if I, if, if, if wow. I may, it sounds like um, me, Sargon might that. be losing a... Oh, yeah, I, I, I can just say fuck Sargon from now on because I, I just don't fucking Jesus trust the guy. Jesus fucking Christ. No, he's just, he's, he's just losing faith in this thing. And here's the thing. Uh, when it comes to oh, JF, shit. JF is... He, he, <laughs> he is using fallacies... Expert. No, 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 and no, 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 no. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. He's the, gaslighting the, the skeptic Pill, community. The Coach Red Pill stuff. I shared it with Sargon in a common interest saying, I won't publish this. I think you should know about this. And I showed it to him. Mm -hmm. And now he's ambushing we, me with it to make some kind of point on YouTube. Jesus Christ, he's burying me. Yeah, fuck Sargon. I don't trust that guy. He's going to bury us in a grave with a horse head with trout written on the gravestone. You don't fuck with the stepfather and live. Real quick, guys, real quick, because I'm, I'm really hungover and I, I, can't, I can't keep this up because i got to lay back down. But obviously, if, if you need me to help talk to Sargon and Carl, let me know. But the thing you have to remember about Sargon when this comes up, and this is the most important thing you have to remember, is that Sargon is a political activist. Sargon is not a scientist. He doesn't even understand how these conversations are even supposed to go. He's being naive and... It, it, it's just, it, he's being gullible. So he's a retarded, naive, gullible idiot, apparently. Oh, and uh, fuck him, because you can't trust him. Untrustworthy, gullible, fucking retarded idiot who's naive. That, that Jeff, Jeff. Oh my god, the fact that I gathered this data on Coach Red Bull is going to bite me in the fucking ass, because he knows I gathered it. Where the fuck is Jeff Holiday now? And that would be one of the sound clips that exonerates Zeph. 
he knows that I gathered it. He didn't say, Jeff Holiday, you gathered it. He didn't say, Zeph, you gathered it. Kraut is admitting he's the one that found the information, and he shared it with fucking everybody. He shared it with people in that Discord. He shared it with Sargon of Akkad. Kraut, you need to let him know that any information that you gathered on Coach Red Pill was a background check on his credentials and who he is as a person. That is all. It wasn't meant yeah. for tactics to be used against him in a SJW way. It was to verify his credibility as yeah, the, the, as, 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 a, as somebody who speaks Jeff, in that field Jeff, of expertise. Jeff, 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 Jeff. The data I gathered on Coach Redfield is now being used against me, essentially. They think what do you I, mean? That's the thing. Like The first thing he brought up, why are you gathering private information, like, for example, on Coach Redfield? It's not private information. And here's the thing, he, 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 he claims I've been doing the same with Ryan Falk, etc, etc, that I'm gathering private data. And What's private about, about Ryan Falk? I can yeah, Google Brian every, Falk every, 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 I have to tell you something, Jeff, I, I shared the things that I got on Coach Red with Sargon of Akkad. Yeah, so? And he's now accusing so me of doing SJW tactics. That's not SJW tactics. That's fucking. That's vetting. That's vetting somebody who's talking as a public figure. Exactly. That's something every news organization does. That's something every fucking YouTuber does. That's absolutely fucking preposterous. The only reason why anybody gives a shit about any of this is because they're positioning themselves as being persecuted. This is that is a fucking SJW tactic. Oh, my persecution. Oh, I'm a persecution. This right. is why it's wrong. No, that what's wrong right. actually is what's wrong is defrauding a fucking economist. What's wrong is being a large piece of shit that has to hide from social media for three years. So once again, Sargon of Akkad is just a fucking moron that doesn't understand how the internet works. This wasn't doxing and smearing. They were doing a background check. But naive, gullible, dumb fuck Sargon just doesn't really understand that. But do you know what the most fucking remarkable thing about all of this is? is that even though Sargon was in that call with Kraut, telling him it's morally wrong to use information to smear somebody, that she should attack their argument, that he didn't want any part of this, Kraut still somehow succeeded, because Sargon of Akkad released a video about Coach Redpill, in which he shares the information that Kraut gathered. So this was posted to Kiwi Farms. Now, it says King of Pole posted it, and we verified it. And if it is King of Pole, the one I know, hey man, how's it going? How you doing? Long time no speak. Um, like, I don't know whether it is. I don't know who it was actually posted this. It could just be someone with a similar name or something like that. I don't know. But um, this is just all public information. I mean, as you can see, it's YouTube videos. It's him archives. It's, it's nothing that's not already public. It's just been brought together on this post. And if you look in the video description you'll see the Kiwi Farms link. The Kiwi Farms link that was put up by a proxy of a proxy of Kraut. So I guess in a way, and this is the weirdest fucking thing about it, Kraut succeeded. Do you remember Operation Mincemeat? It was a plan that Kraut and the people in his Discord had cooked up. Do you see the two names listed there? Thunderfoot and Sargon of Akkad. The entirety of this plan was to trick the alt-right into thinking Sargon or Thunderfoot were going to make videos. This would get a reaction out of the alt-right. That reaction would then spur Sargon and Thunderfoot into actually making those videos. They use a lie to get a reaction to make it become true. Now let's fast forward to the fallout of Kraut's Discord server and all that information getting leaked. Coach Redpill puts up a video accusing Sargon of Akkad of knowing what was going on. And in response... Sargon of Akkad makes a video. Kraut effectively used Sargon of Akkad in Operation Mincemeat. I don't know, really makes you think, gets the noggin joggin'. One thing I've repeatedly heard throughout this entire autistic saga is that digging up information on other people and then using it isn't doxing. That a majority of the people in that Discord, in the skeptic crowd, Kraut and T and others, have all said that's not underhanded. It's a background check. They're just doing research on an opponent. And sharing that information or putting it onto a forum or even putting it into a video is completely A-OK. -okay. Well, I'm glad that Kraut feels that way. I'm glad Kraut is fine with me sharing publicly available information, because that's what I plan to do right now.
As I'm sure you can imagine, once all this information came out and people really started paying attention to it, different areas of the internet decided to start digging into Kraut and T. They began to put together infographics, trying to find other accounts that he may have. Boy oh boy, did they fucking strike gold. Through a little bit of internet detective work and lining up personal pictures that he had posted on different forum accounts, as well as him using the same username that he used on Steam a long time ago, they were able to track down the account, the Germans are coming. And apparently they must be coming pretty fucking hard. That I don't believe. Even I own a dildo, vibrating nipple clamps, leather straps, chains, cuffs, corsages, and various other things. Vibrating nipple clamps. Never really had you pegged for that, Kraut. You always seem like a uh, sophisticated, high IQ guy. I can't really picture you chained up to a bed with electricity going through your tits. From the thread, wife wants me to have an open relationship. Meh. When in a relationship, I never bothered if she slept with other men. Oh boy, welcome to Cucktails, everybody. Oh my god, my favorite new game on the market's Cuckhead, starring Zeph and Kraut and T. It's the hottest shit out right now. Hey, remember that story Kraut told everybody about how he split his dick in half with an axe? You know, a totally believable story about a man somehow missing a piece of wood and opening his cock straight down the middle. I used to work in a lumber mill when I was 17 years old, and my job was there was this machine where they would put the big trees into it and it would scrape the, um, the bark off the trees. And of course not all the bark would go off. And my job was, after the tree went through the machine, I had to take an axe and chip the remaining bark off the tree. And what happened was I slipped and yanked the axe into my crotch. And what? what? And sliced my cock open. Well, my, my nickname in, in the, during the remaining name uh, years in school was, uh, what was it, Chieftain Split Cock. Apparently, that was a lie. The story's a little less interesting than giving yourself a brisk with a chainsaw. In the thread, the most amount of pain you've ever felt. A kick between the legs I got at the age of 17. It ripped my cock open, which had to be stitched together again. Funny thing was that I was so utterly fucking drunk and on pills that I didn't even notice the injury or even the pain until the blood started dripping out of my pants. For some reason, our boy here really likes to get kicked in the dick. I mean, it's a common fucking thing that keeps reoccurring throughout his life. I'm not sure if it's a prelude to something, but let's read another post. From the thread, when the need for closure is great. You certainly have more guts than I have. I was viciously abused as a child by various people in my surroundings. At the age of 12 to 13, I was almost castrated by a group of classmates who tied me to a chair and kept repeatedly beating me in between the legs with their feet and objects. At the age of 14, I was almost murdered by the same people during gym class. Wow, I wonder if all the abuse to his genitals had any effect on his sexual preferences. Oh, what do you know it did? BDSM. You know, good old Kraut, tied up to a chair with nipple clamps on, getting kicked in the deck repeatedly by various strangers. All while his girlfriend's fucking some other dude on the bed next to him. Well, hey, Jim, you can't judge him too harshly. He is a paragon of progressive value. Did you see his Discord server? It was all-inclusive, allowing anybody with a different opinion to come in and say what they wanted. I am sick and tired of these disgusting sand monkey animal savages. It is time to pack them into trains and ship them back to their filthy deserts. Through being a slippery, slimy, self-centered fuck, I managed to squeeze a shitload of money out of my thick country pumpkin relatives this Christmas, more than I would ever need to cover my living costs. So I decided to donate 50 euros to Doctors Without Borders, buy some retro games on Steam sale, and buy $200 euros in pay safe cards, upload it to my account, and buy some Amazon gift cards for myself to stock up on some essential living things, like new sex toys, and the last remaining Judas Priest album that I don't own as an LP. Gotta, gotta take advantage of those stupid fucking relatives so you can buy yourself some new dildos. Totally understandable. It's the Christmas sort of thing. Well, the saga of Kraut and Tea is finally coming to an end. I've taken you through the history of it. What began his crusade against the alt-right, against the right-leaning neo-Nazi, race-realist, ethno-state-loving motherfuckers. I've talked about the people he gathered by his side and the things they got up to. About him targeting different individuals for flagging their videos or doxing them or spreading their information about him manipulating and deceiving everyone around him in an attempt to use them as a tool to further his own goal. It is a remarkable implosion to have watched in real time. It was uh, exciting to watch the information continually leak out as the story shifted from one day to the next. With the loss of his YouTube channel, his dignity, and his income, at least he accomplished his goal. 
Sure, he may be doing road work for the rest of his life, no longer getting a cushy paycheck from talking about Islam or feminism on YouTube once a week, but at the end of the day, I, I don't think that's what really embarrasses him. I don't think it's seeing everybody turn on him. I don't think it's having his past dug up. I don't think it's the destruction of everything that he held sacred and dear. I think what really sticks up his ass, the thing that probably bothers him the most, is that because of him, not in spite of him, but because of him, the one thing he didn't want to happen did happen. The most watched live stream at the time on YouTube was a conversation by Richard Spencer with other individuals about a white ethnostate and race realism with upwards of 12 to 14,000 people watching. I want you to imagine if you waged a war against somebody and because you decided to wage a war, they ended up winning. That if you had not even engaged in the first place, this never would have happened. But Kraut let his ego get to him. He let his vengeance get to him. He let his anger get to him. And he ended up becoming not a detriment, but an asset to the enemy he saw across from himself. And that has got to stick up his ass something fucking fierce, which he probably enjoys as he's tied up getting electricity run through his tits.